All right, we are back with part two of our video series on a dynamic router in PHP. Just uh, check out uh, part one to see how we wrote the tests that we're gonna be using. And you can see right now we've got our tests written. They're failing, which is wonderful. Always gotta write a failing test first, right? Okay, let's get started. This is the class. We're in our public function get route. And let's start with the very simple task of simply matching our requests with the static routes. So if in array our URI is in our routes, we're simply going to return the URI. Give ourselves a comment so we can know if static route found return URI. Save and run our tests. All right, so our static routes are working. We've got a couple green tests going. Let's keep this up. All right, so that was the easy part, right? The static routes hardly worth a class. So the part that really matters is finding dynamic routes that match. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna set up an array that we will push matched routes into. And this is where you guys will see how we can detect ambiguous routes because if we get more than one match, as we list, uh, loop through that list, then we have an ambiguous route, don't we? We absolutely do. So we're going to loop through each route. With a for each statement, dollar routes as dollar route. Open and close the curly brace because the curly brace needs to be closed. Okay, don't leave the curly brace open. Just, just don't do it. Okay. D pause. Uh, so, D stands for dynamic. Pause stands for position. Equals string position or stir pause dollar route, and we're looking for that little colon, that tiny little colon that indicates that that section is dynamic. So look for colon indicating a dynamic section. Okay, if the dynamic position does not equal false and I really hate how that sounds because that sounds confusing. So I will put a thing that says this route contains dynamic sections. So you get it? See what we're doing here? We're saying we're looping through each route. And if we come across one that has a colon in it, it's a dynamic route. That's how we figure it out. Simple enough. So. Now, once we have our dynamic route, we need to do a couple things. We need to split the route and URI into arrays uh, in the sections, which for those of you, if you don't understand what I mean by split, um, that kind of is more of a different language term. I'm going to use the explode function in PHP to accomplish this. We're also gonna get lengths of arrays and check if they are the same. And the reason we want to do that is because it doesn't make sense to descend into any other logic if there are different lengths of route sections, meaning so if we do slash user slash one, two, three, four, that's two sections. So we probably shouldn't look in slash. You know, we shouldn't descend into the route slash to figure out if that route matches. You'll see here in a minute what I mean. And then this sounds confusing at the moment, but I think most of you will understand. Pop off the blank 
value at the beginning of the arrays because what's going to happen is that first slash on all of our routes because we're going to explode on slash right that front slash which I don't know which way you guys are seeing this I think you're seeing it that way hopefully you are uh, will yield an empty first member of the array and instead of having to deal with that I just pop it off all right because I feel like it that's why um okay so let's go ahead and just do this uri split equals explode slash dollar uri dollar uh, route split equals explode and slash wow my typing skills are on point today do you see that dollar route okay Mm, control Z it now. Let's get the links. We'll do a dollar U count for URI count equals count. Come on, learn to type, buddy. URI split. Then R count R R we make the count the route split. <clears throat> And real simple, we'll just check right now if our count does not equal you count. Well, then we're going to continue. Continuing on. We don't need to do any more logic on that because those routes don't even have the same amount of arguments or same amount of path sections. So we'll save ourselves a small amount of compute power, a little bit of efficiency. And then we're going to pop those beginning pieces off, array shift, dollar URI split. We'll do a little copy action to help us with some speed. Okay, so we've got our first members popped off there. Now what are we going to do? So we've got some routes that are pretty close. So we're going to do routes match equals and we're going to write a new function all right because i don't like doing for each's inside of for each's i hate it i hate doing for each's inside of for each's okay this is a pet peeve of mine it may not be based in anything other than my own neurotic need but you guys are watching my videos you're gonna have to bear with it, deal with it, whatever. So here's what we're going to do. Let me explain. We have now at this point a route that matches the same number of path sections as our request. So we do need to loop through each section of the route and the request to see if they match. And this is where I'm going to create a function to do that because I hate nesting for each statements, okay? All right, rant over, moving on. So we're gonna write a private function called dynamic route match dollar URI split, we're going to pass the URI split in and the route split in, okay? And obviously, if we come out of that function smelling like roses, meaning we found that they all match appropriately, then we're going to pop it on. Pop it in, append, push into our routes matched array, okay? Routes match. We will do routes underscore matched brackets equals route. We're pushing in the route, okay? That's a matched route right there. So if we get a true 
back from our dynamic route match. That's a match. We're going to push it into routes matched. Copyish. Okay. So now we need a private function called learn to type. Yes, we need a private function called learn to type. And I'm going to run that function at least 20 times before I make my next video. It's dynamic route match URI split. Interrupt, split, open and close. Let's come down so we can read a little bit. Okay, private function, dynamic route match, URI split, route split. Here we go. We'll start off with for each. And actually, we're going to do this first. This is going to seem confusing at first, but trust me. This is a more efficient way to do this. And I'll explain why after we get done writing it. So we're going to start with matches equals true. And you're going to be like, why would you start with matches equals true? What if this function fails and returns true because your dumminess decided you were going to start with the assumption that it matched? OK, I understand. They're completely valid. Just bear with me. I, I think the alternative is worse. So let's try it this way. Uh, dollar URI split as dollar key because I would like the index as well. URI section. And that'll be our value that we're going to use. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to check if this section is dynamic and skip it. Okay? Check if the section is dynamic and skip because. Obviously, these sections are not going to match if the route is dynamic or if the, that section of the route is dynamic. You got it. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Stir pause. Route split. And then dollar key as an index. Colon, right? So we have it looking for that colon. Right, so stir position. And I'm trying to make sure I got these parentheses correct because that will ruin me every time. So if it does not equal false, meaning that it found it. <laughs> I really hate how some of these end up turning into like incredibly double and triple negatives and quadruple negatives and just horribly, horribly confusing ways of thinking about things, but that's why I write comments because code doesn't always make sense. If the route section has a colon in it and it's dynamic, we're going to continue. Okay, that's what that section of code does. And the next part we want to do is check if the static section matches. Static section matches. Okay. If dollar URI split does not equal dollar route split. Uh, I screwed this up. URI section, not split, does not equal dollar route split open and close them curly braces now we set that matches equals false i think that was a little bit of frozen tune that i just did right there and we're gonna break so if the matches ever equal false we're gonna break right away and of course we'll be outside of our for loop and we're gonna return matches which will be either true or false Okay, so why, for the sake of all that is holy, would I do it this way? Basically, what would happen is if we were to try and start with a presumption of false and turn it into true inside the for each loop, 
uh, is, is really, we'd have to add more lines of code than what I have right now. So for me, this was the least amount of code possible that I could write to accomplish what I was trying to do. Meaning in order to turn this into true, at the very end of all these four eaches, I have to double check that there were no falses in this check right here. So you get what I'm saying? You following me? It's easier to say, oh shit, I found a false one, break, exit, return, instead of trying to come back out of the loop and double check that they were all true. Uh, comment down below if you guys think I'm an idiot. I'm fine with that. And if you do think I'm an idiot, back it up with some code. Maybe you have a more optimized way or even a more clear way to do what I'm trying to do here. I welcome it. Please help me. Help me. Okay. Moving on. That's our private function. You know what? Let's save this. And actually... It almost makes no sense to run these tests because we're still not handling dynamics yet. So after we do that, we're in our dynamic RHEL match. It comes back. It looks loops through all those sections. It finds whether or not they all match properly and returns true or false. And then we come back here. If in fact it does have some routes that matched, it pushes it into that matched route, mat, routes matched array. Blah, blah, blah. You guys know what I'm saying? But that's obviously not the end of it. So what do we do after that for each loop? Because we gotta do something, all right? If we found a single match, we successfully matched a route. And then if we got more than one. The routes list contains ambiguous dynamic routes. And then last but not least, return route not, not found. And if we do this right now, we should at least get our route not found test to pass. Yep, route not found passes. And then all of our dynamics. Yep, dynamic fail, dynamic fail, dynamic fail. Make sure our statics are currently passing. Statics are all passing. So coming back, if we found a single match, we successfully matched a route. So if we're just simply going to count here the routes. Routes matched equals one. We're going to return that very first entry. And that's that. So let's save this. See what else we get passing here. Cool, we've got some dynamics that are passing. The only thing that's failing now is our ambiguous route. So let's look at how we're gonna handle that. If we got one, if we got more than one, then we've got some ambiguity. If count dollar routes underscore matched is greater than one, well, we're fudged sickles, fudged sickles. Return, we're gonna return an array. This array is going to have an error and it's gonna have a message that says ambiguous routes matched. Let's start there and see, we should at least get one more passing test. Yep, so that very last one there, ambiguous routes match. Now, what we're looking for in these last two tests is that the routes that were ambiguous get included in that array or in that response. 
So we're just do this, comma, routes equals whatever arrow, another nested array. This will be just a simple array of dollar routes matched. Uh, sorry, I forget. Sometimes when I'm thinking, I just think ahead of what I'm doing. Don't wrap arrays in brackets. Just don't do it. Friends don't let friends wrap arrays in brackets, okay? Control save, run tests, bam. That's it, guys. This video went on a little bit longer than I wanted to, but we now have a way to take a request, take a list of routes, and pass that information into a function and get it to understand what it is that you're trying to get. Okay? Catch me in the next video where we actually make something cool happen besides test pass. All right, see you guys.